The incredible game of chicken between Konami and Rabbit and Bear Studios has finally come to an end, and Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes finally has a release date. My name is Tom, welcome back to the channel. Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes Hello everyone, like I said at the top of the video, my name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and if you know me, you enjoy my content, you know turn-based strategy RPGs, kind of my biggest deal, Regular RPGs, such as Chrono Trigger, which started this channel, also kind of my deal. So if you enjoy either type of game or you just enjoy what I do, you're interested in hearing more about Aiden and Chronicle 100 Heroes as we come up to the release, perhaps, then consider liking and subscribing. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much. So what is Aiden Chronicle 100 Heroes and what is the new news about it? Well, as a quick recap, if you don't know, Aiden Chronicle is a spiritual successor to the Soikoden series, directed and produced by Yoshitaka Murayama, the original creator of the Soikoden series. Specifically, this is really a spiritual successor to 1 and 2, the games that Murayama did the most work on and the games that are most well regarded in the series. Soikoden is a classic PS1 era JRPG that was created around the same time as the height of Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest and things like that as an attempt by Konami to answer those series. And now, after Murayama left Konami, apparently on good terms, but still, uh, was not really involved in the publishing of Soikoden 3, though he did a bunch of work on it, and was not involved at all on Soikoden 4 and 5, he's come back with an indie studio funded through Kickstarter as the third most successfully funded game on Kickstarter in its history, if I have my information correct, which is wild, and is creating Oiden Chronicle 100 Heroes, a again, spiritual successor to his most notable work. Soikinen and now Oiden are notable as being RPGs that have a focus on a massive roster of side characters. Like, you might be able to tell from the name, Oiden Chronicle 100 Heroes, there are 100 playable characters, recruitable characters that you can add to your party, or in this case, army, to use throughout the entirety of the game. Soikoden had 108, as it was based on the Chinese novel Water Margin, wherein you had the 108 bandits, thus the number of characters. And so now we've toned it down to around 100, which I think is totally fine. Well, this quick recap over, what is the actual news? We got a six minute features and gameplay trailer for Oiden Chronicle, where we saw a lot of new information about the game that we hadn't really seen any updates about in quite some time. The game was supposed to come out in 2022, got delayed due to COVID and things like that, then was put to 2023, and now has been pushed back to 2024 with a release date of April 23rd, 2024. The biggest takeaways for me from this features trailer, which is linked in the description if you want to see it for yourself, I highly recommend that you check it out if you're at all interested in this game, is just how many immediate similarities I noticed to Soikoden 1 and 2 that I hadn't really been aware of in Oiden Chronicle before. I'd seen the fact that there was going to be a hundred heroes, I'd seen a lot of the art and basic gameplay of a bunch of the heroes, but there's so much more here now. War battles, unite attacks, terrain, and making use of it in the middle of battle, which is an interesting feature I haven't seen before. A focus on a split narrative in a large, large world to try and flesh out the entirety of that world very colorful and interesting characters, up to and including actual shark and kangaroo men, which is awesome. Or it reminds me kind of a breath of fire in that way. There's a lot to go over here. And that's to say nothing of the absolutely beautiful visuals, mix of pixel art and 3D graphics that we've been seeing more and more of in JRPGs, turn-based strategy RPGs, all that type of stuff in the modern era. I just, man, this trailer was incredible. It just goes and there's so much to see. So let's start off with the characters first. First off with our three protagonists, we of course have a Soikoden classic, a black haired young man with a primarily red outfit with yellow and black accents, dual wielding two odd weapons. This is pretty clearly a favorite of Murayama's, strikes very clearly of the protagonist of Soikoden 2 with features of protagonist of Soikoden 1. Then his partner in crime, a militaristic young man in a blue outfit, blonde hair, very formal, well put together, strikes of the deuteragonist in Soikoden 2. And then our third character, a dark-skinned young woman in green who appears to be some sort of forest guardian druid type, which is something new to me in Soikoden. Potentially, this is something we've seen before in 3 through 5, but my experience is with the first two games. And unless we're talking about the elves of those games, it's not exactly a familiar type of character. So I'm excited to see what her story is like and how it shakes out. You just look at some of these characters. I love the variety of character designs. We even have like a skeleton lich man, come on. There's going to be so many fun designs in this game and just being able to put together a bizarre cast of characters as your chosen JRPG party out of all of these wild options is gonna be a total blast. And it's something that's one of my favorite aspects of the Soikoden games. 
Then, of course, we have an open, explorable world, very much strikes things like Octopath Traveler, which I would not be surprised to see as the primary inspiration here whatsoever. And the mention of runes, which is fun, because runes in Soikoden are one of the driving factors behind every story. They're the source of all magic in the world, they're incredibly powerful, and oftentimes your main characters are a bearer of some sort of true rune, the ultimate epitome of their particular brand of magic. So how they're going to work in Oyden Chronicle, we have yet to see in its entirety, but I imagine that they're going to be quite important here as well. I truly can't emphasize enough as well how beautiful this game world looks thus far. It's not exactly the same style as something like Octopath Traveler or Triangle Strategy, which was nearly entirely pixelated at all times. There's much more of a blend of pixel characters and 3D backgrounds, but it looks so nice. It functions so well. I'm so glad that games like Octopath have really leveraged this style of design for JRPGs to new heights because we're seeing so much more of it now in these types of titles that have been really embracing it. It's not just full 3D. We don't have to go the full fan Final Fantasy route. We can still incorporate pixel into it, which is so important for such a classic genre. And of course, with our characters, we get a number of Unite attacks, as they're called in Soikoden. They're more called combo attacks here, wherein your friendship level, your relationships with different characters, characters that maybe have a reason to interact with each other due to a weapon type or shared interests, such as these muscle men here, will be able to perform combo attacks together for massive damage. Either single target, AoE, putting debuffs on characters, who knows? The options are endless, but... It's a classic feature of the Soikoden series, and I, of course, am very happy to see it returning here. It's only a quick shot, but we can see here that there's actually some sort of terrain effect, as I mentioned near the top of the video, wherein you can choose to use cover and attack from cover during major fights. I don't know how much of a role this is going to have in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, or if it's going to be more of just like a gimmick in certain boss fights. I'm excited to see how that winds up shaking out, but it is a fun way to change up the classic turn-based JRPG battle flow, if you know what I'm saying. Just a little bit of extra variety there is going to be nice. Speaking of variety, though, we do have to talk about wars. In Soikoden 1 and 2, these varied. Originally, they were more of just a rock, paper, scissors, luck of the draw, using special abilities to try and get the upper hand type of scenario, which was fun, but could be a little frustrating at times. Whereas in Soikoden 2, they actually functioned more like classic turn-based strategy gaming with grid-based movement and positioning squads effectively, using their abilities to again gain the upper hand, and it seems like that's more what we're going for here in Oyden Chronicle. These battles tend to happen at pivotal moments in the story, wherein normally there'd just be a big cutscene or characters discussing the war that happened, but here you actually take your characters, your carefully crafted army of these unique heroes and their soldiers out onto the field of battle and do war and try to succeed. And it's scary because Depending on how you perform, you could actually wind up having consequences happen to you. You can lose characters permanently in these battles. They can be removed from your roster for the rest of the game. You can have characters temporarily incapacitated, captured, all sorts of different things can happen. And it's nice because it means that these are not just glorified cutscenes that you have to play through, right? These are actual gameplay segments with consequences that make it so you have to actually pay attention to what you're doing to try and not experience those consequences. What I want to know is how many war battles there's going to be in Oiden Chronicle. There's one of my favorite parts just because it adds a little bit of variety. Obviously, it speaks to my turn-based strategy RPG gamer heart. And these, they're just fun. You don't see stuff like this in other JRPGs very often, and I'm glad to see that it's returning here as well. We get a good view of the castle, the home, the base, however you want to view it, the headquarters, as Oiden Chronicle puts it, which is another classic aspect of the Soikin series, because when you have an entire army of characters at your command, you have to have some place to put them all, right? Well, what if you got your own rundown village or town or castle that you then could build up over time with all of the characters that you recruit, who will either have their own homes, their own setups, run shops, or even potentially facilitate a bunch of mini games, which is a classic, again, of the Soikoden series. I know people think of mini games when they talk about Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy, but Soikoden is no slouch. You want cooking mini games? We've got that. You want dice mini games? We've got that. You want various other like sauna design mini games, all sorts of weird stuff. And now what I did in Chronicles bringing cooking, racing, Beyblade, and a number of other things to the fore. It's I'm so happy that we're going to have all these mini games back again. You can see that Murayama and the team have put a ton of passion into bringing their vision of a successor to Soikoden to life here. Uh, as far as other things that you can do in the town, you'll see that it actually does evolve over time. 
new levels may be added, new buildings will be restored, festivals and fairgrounds will start taking place. And what's nice is you can actually go around and talk to all of your party members here. You can learn about what their interests are, start side quests with them, find cutscenes, all sorts of fun ways to interact, which is important when you have so many characters. You're not going to fit them all into the main narrative all the time, so having somewhere that you can go as the player to interact with them, learn more about them, and maybe find new favorites that you want to bring out onto the battlefield in the future is key. Uh, and it makes sense, too, because one of the things that Moriyama has stated about his design philosophy when making games is that while the main character or main characters are important for driving the plot forward, often the most memorable characters, the characters that stick with the audience for the rest of their lives, are those side characters who have their own stories, their own motivations, their own backgrounds, and potentially their own ends separate from what the hero is going to be going through or experiencing. And that shines through absolutely with the Soikoden series, and it looks like it's going to shine through now with Oiden Chronicle. That's pretty much all there is to analyze about this trailer for now. Just a ton of good, juicy information, a lot of insight into things that had only been hinted at before or that fans were hoping to see exist. And it just looks incredible. I'm so happy that the team has taken the time that they've needed to fully flesh out the game, really nail down the visuals, get all of this extra love and passion for mini games and the town and war battles and everything in there. It seems like they've really cooked up something special, and I highly, highly encourage all of you to check it out. Again, this is the third most highly funded video game on Kickstarter. That is huge that is not nothing like that is a massive amount of money a massive amount of support and i think whether you're a fan of the classic soikoden series or just jrpgs in general you should consider checking this one out when it drops in april i'm certainly going to be i'll be highlighting it on the channel and i hope that you all enjoy my upcoming content about the game prior to its release and that gameplay when we wind up doing it and potentially any guides if there's any information to cover in that regard uh, let me know what your thoughts are about Oiden Chronicle. Are you excited for it? Were you planning on getting it before you saw this video? Are you thinking about getting it now? Are you a long-standing fan of the Soikoden series who's checking it out or someone who's never heard of it before and this is going to be your first experience with Murayama's work? I want to know about all of it because this is a series that is woefully underrepresented in the current zeitgeist. Of course, once Soikoden 1 and 2 remake inevitably come out at around the exact same time because Konami is playing weird games with the release date of that game to seemingly undercut Oiden Chronicle, then we'll be talking about that as well and it will become a little bit more forward in the public consciousness. But until then, got to strike up our conversations where we can. With all that said, though, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you for watching. I do very much appreciate it. I hope you all have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other. Bye now.